All right, let's do another paint and sip. We are on day number something something of our quarantine. We're going to start off with just a nice dry canvas. We'll start off by doing some pretty painting colors. I'm going to start off with uh, some flat brushes, my favorites. I can show you the palette with all the colors that I'm going to be using. Here's my palette. It looks a little messy, but it is a glass Pyrex, making it super awesome sauce and easy to put the lid on when you're done and walk away. Now we're going to start off by, first of all, we have to, da, 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 we have to map out the painting. We have a nice, pretty white canvas and we're going to map it out by breaking up the colors and then we're going to fill in the colors. So let's go ahead and start off with say a spring scene, maybe a a backyard house or something like that. I have so many paint and sip classes that I do that I normally just try to um, go ahead and conglomerate any pieces that we put together. So this one I'll try and straighten it out so you can see it. So we'll just go ahead and map out we know there's going to be a house. We'll just map out some sort of a house in the background. Most houses have a window, so we'll just go ahead and add a small window. And then we're going to add maybe a sort of a door down in this area. Okay, and then that's all we're going to add for that. Just a hint of the house. Just a hint of it. Because we're going to add so much color to it. So you can see with a simple top of a triangle, a little bit of a door going on, a little bit of a window. Let's just go ahead and fill in that window. See how easy it was? Just a half circle. And we'll fill that in. We're not going to fill in any of this lower area. We'll just maybe put the bottom of the, maybe a stairs. Okay, well that looks like an easy stairs coming down. Now you'll notice that we made all these lines with straight lines, a box, rectangle box, a half circle and a box, a little triangle and two lines coming straight down. Let's go ahead and add that second line. All you really want to do is get so that your eye starts to see it. Once your start, eye starts to see images, it makes it a lot easier to start breaking up the canvas. We'll go ahead and say that's the ground right there. But we want to push the scene back a little bit. And the best way to push something back is to add a foreground line. It's just a simple line. It could be just a simple line that comes down here. But let's just go ahead and say we'll add a line, sort of a trail. And what this does is it automatically pushed this scene back by adding some space in the foreground. So we went ahead and, hey, Thea, thank you so much for watching. Uh, yeah, so, and Angeline, yes, we are using acrylic paints again. And um, the acrylic paints, oh, hi, Mary, how are you? It's so good to see you. Jenny, Jenny, nice to see you too. Tony, Andy, Mary Lou. All of you, yes, paint and sip just to have some fun because I know we're all at home doing our thing, trying to stay home away from the stores because they're so much fun um, <laughs> these days. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a pathway. We sort of described a house. We want to sort of stick with spring colors. The spring colors are all kinds of variety of colors. So we'll leave all of this area over here and maybe some up areas up in here. We want to save some room for the sky. But we'll go ahead and fill in the areas that we know and we're just going to use brush blends that go straight across, horizontal, straight across to fill in that ground piece. Once we get a puzzle piece that we like and that we know we're gonna use, it's best just to fill it in. We can add to it later. You'll notice that we mapped out, we first mapped out the piece with a little bit of blue. Now we're going back and forth with a little bit of brown. This is a sienna brown. Going back and forth just to add a little tiny bit of um, color to it to help secure it, to help make it like, okay, there is the ground. Now I'm gonna go ahead 
And um, since we know that's our house, but we're first gonna add some more colors around the house. You want the house to look like it's full of nice springtime colors. One of my favorite trees is the cherry blossom trees. So we'll just put, I happen to go, I live in Sandpoint. Um, oh, hi, Tony from India. Wow, well, my goodness. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put some springtime colors. Hi, Susie, nice to have you into there we're just mapping out some simple colors this is a soft magenta color hey larry louise jenny bobby hey how's it going okay so we have now a nice mapped out this looks like it could be a simple little tree if we were to add a trunk coming down somewhere in that vicinity hey Rhonda how's it going I was just thinking about you the other day I hope your family's doing well I talk to your mom every now and then on Facebook I like everything that she does um, anyway it's good to see you I hope you're doing well your beautiful self hey honey how are you good to see you I'm giving you a hug an air hug these days because we're all about air hugs now okay so um, now we have a simple little bit of a tree but we want to add lots of spring colors lots of spring colors so we'll go ahead and add some a little bit of yellow we'll just say maybe there's a yellow bush right over here we're not gonna let the two colors mix just yet you could easily paint this on um, cardstock paper or canvas if you wanted it doesn't have to be anything specific it's just once again you're mapping out your color you're filling it in since we have a color of yellow on that side let's go ahead and add a little bit of color on this side just a little bit of color over here something fun something simple not not too I'm doing well too. Thanks, girlfriend. Rhonda Davidson. I have a, she's like one of my friends from very, very young. I can remember her when I was in kindergarten and I knew her all the way up through high school. And so she's the bombshell. She's awesome. Super pretty, super awesome. Lives in California. You take care of yourself, girlfriend. Okay, so now we have these beautiful yellows. Let's go ahead and add some more color up in here. Believe it or not, I'm kind of just trying to plan it out so that we have some nice colors and a balance of colors. Once we have a nice balance of colors. Hey Blake, how's it going? Good to see you. Tony, Andrew, good to see you guys. Yes, hopefully everybody's staying safe and at home. Now we have this beautiful little bit of colors. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more of that deep purple. Because the purple, this is, yeah, it's not quite as deep, but I'm going to deepen it a little tiny bit with blue. Just add some blue in here. I can add, see I'm watering it down, mostly water and a little bit of color. I can change those shapes around as I go, but I do have to add some colors on there. Hey, Rhonda, you're such a sweetie pie. Linda, Louise, good to see you. Yes, yes, and Jenny... And Barbara, Sandy, thank you, thank you, thank you all for watching. And please take care of yourselves. Everybody's looking out for everybody else. It seems like we've got the happy thing going on these days. Everybody's like, oh, take care of yourself. Air hug. Okay, so now we have, I don't really know, but I'm probably going to put maybe a fence or something in here. But believe it or not, in order to build depth into a piece, we have to... We have to have the background. So if I was gonna put a fence, which sounds awesome, I would have to have a background that something goes behind the fence. So I'm gonna need to go ahead and is add a darker color. So we now have beautiful purple, we have some yellow in there. We're gonna add tons of green in the end. We also have this sky puzzle piece up here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some color to that. On the tip of my brush, I'm going to put two colors. I'm gonna put white and a little bit of blue. Let's just see what that looks like there. Hey, Jenna, it's good to see you. Miss you, sweetie. You know, we love you up here in Sandpoint. You can come on up anytime, only you can't come now. <laughs> I'm hearing that this may last for a little bit longer, but I'm also hearing from almost everybody in Sandpoint to stop watching the news. So nobody's watching the news because doctors are getting more anxiety cases than they are any other. So we're adding blue and white to the sky. Now you'll notice, look at what happens. If you accidentally added too much color, say, oh, oh no, I don't want that much blue in my sky. I'll just go back and add pure white. I know that that blue is still wet and I'm gonna continue to mix it. Hey, Sandy, good to see you from Maryland. And Geneva 
from Australia. Hey, Geneva, all the way from Australia. Yes, I think you have, I've sent you stuff before. Yes, we have some nice blue going on. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's a nice sky. Now remember, with acrylic paints, you can continue to change things up anytime you want. You just have to either let it dry in between the coats, which is pretty easy to do, or you erase it when it's still wet. Now I kind of like that blue, but look at what happens. That color is still wet. I'm gonna clean out my brush. I have a nice clean brush. I literally set it on a towel and to get most of the water out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to touch the white again. Have nice pure white on there. I'm gonna to touch that sky. Let's add some curved lines to make sort of a cloud like. See how we can easily add just to break it up. Because even if you were looking at the sky, well maybe not in California, but you'll get some breakup, some little bit of clouds. We get lots of puffy clouds here in Idaho. So we'll add some beautiful beautiful hey mariposa sbca love you guys you do such a good job take care of all those loving animals we love those animals gosh what will we do without our animals oh my goodness these last few weeks we've really needed them to comfort us and make us feel like oh it's not so bad still they're still like what's going on with you but Okay, so there we have nice, beautiful clouds. You notice how just a few simple steps, we added a nice background. We still have this beautiful pink tree. We're gonna add some depth to it in a minute, but before we fill in that tree anymore, look at how we've easily mapped out some color spots, giving us some color, a little bit of darkness down in here. We're still um, gonna work on that, but we wanna let it dry for a little bit. We're gonna fill in this house puzzle piece. We're gonna fill it in a lot with a, uh, a layer of white. I'm putting pure white on it. You probably can't see it too well, but I'm gonna go ahead so that you can see it better. But look at how you can with the white correct lines. I'm using that background white to correct any lines that I need. I'm gonna make that door blue. What do you think, blue? We could change it if we want. Remember, we're working with acrylic paint, so we could completely, hey, Tony, Larry, Louise, Andy, Mary Lou, from Texas. Hey, Texas, I hope you guys are doing well down there. Yes, and from Barcelona. Hey, Barcelona, good to see you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys are, you're sipping mostly is what you just told me. Okay, you go ahead, you sip and have some fun. We filled in that sky with mostly white now look at what happens i'm going to soften those colors hey nicole how are you sweetie missing you i thought we'd get together sooner but now we gotta all lay low and sip more and hang out okay now i just filled in all that white it's still wet i'm going to soften that white i'm going to put a little tiny bit of blue and i just want to soften it so that it looks because i know that the eaves of the house We'll have a little bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start adding that. I know that there would be a little bit. Miss you too, sweetie. Hey, Christopher, how you doing? Okay, adding a little bit of a shadow under the window seals, maybe up over in here. The tree may be casting a shadow. Now see, because of that white, I am actually bouncing off of that white and letting it hit here and there, nothing specific because shadows can bounce, light can, can bounce. Now look at what happens, say, oh, okay, so there's not enough action going on there. I'm gonna break up that space one more time by adding those little tiny line that create the siding. And I'll just go ahead and see how it starts to break up the house. Look at just a few lines and you really get a nice breakup of the house. Hey Doug, thanks for watching. All right, so we'll go ahead and look at how easy it is. And all that is required on these siding lines is that they're evenly spaced. If it's easier for you to start in the center of a piece, say from this piece to this piece and start in a center to break it up evenly, you can continue not being too specific, but on the siding lines, your eye from this side to this side will catch it. So we wanna make sure to get them evenly spaced. I messed up on that one, so I'm just gonna start again. 
Now look at that. We just created a house with siding. We're going to let that rest for just a Hey, Kathy, good to see you. I hope you're taking care of She takes care of all the animals in Sandpoint. Thank you, Kathy, for doing that. All the animals love her. Okay, so now we have our nice house. We've got a little bit of color going on. What we're going to do is we're going to change the color of that roof. We're just going to get it a little bit deeper and darker. We're going to leave that blue line and we're going to, hi honey, okay, add that blue line, thank you so much for the hearts, all the hearts, thank you so much, hope you guys are all taking care of yourself, just a fun painting project for you, I used to years ago paint on pieces of wood, I had scraps of wood in the garage, and I used to literally cover them with white paint just so I could have something to paint on, so you could do that, Okay, so now we have filled in most of our pieces. Let's fill in those steps. The steps are usually light, dark, light, dark. And we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like, let your eyes see. Most people actually learn better from seeing stuff with their eyes. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a light and dark, not getting super detailed. Look at that, just a nice area. Let me go ahead and add some of that line down in here break up some of these lines over in here and add some more of that color down here now that brown sienna is like a red brown if you have a color that is um you want to spruce up a little bit add a little coolness to it i added a little bit of that purple to that brown look at how pretty that turned out just a little tiny bit of that purple now i have created the stairs and you're like okay now the stairs look all messed up who built those well we'll just go ahead and straighten them out by using straight up and down lines because where the stairs go up and down if you make your brush buns go up and down they actually start to look like that don't ask me why i just know it does but let's take the top of the stairs and add a line all the way across the top all the way across the top I have a little bit of water in there so you just touch your towel and go all the way across the top and keep it so that they're evenly spaced. And look at how we just created stairs. Not super specific. We're going to put lots of greenery over there. So we'll go ahead and keep that. Now, we have literally filled in our whole area. So now that we have all the pieces filled in, we can add some more greenery and maybe even a fence over in here. Now... If I look over in here, it may be hard for you to see, but over in this area right here, there's too much water. So I'm just going to take a nice simple towel and just soak up the water because I want to start building on that. Now look at how it doesn't really do very much. In acrylic paint, we're so lucky. We just wait till it dries. When I used to live at my other house where we had a fireplace, we I would just set lots and lots of paintings over by the fireplace and let them dry and then go work on another one. Now I'm filling it in with another color, just that blue, because I'm gonna put a fence right there. But even the fence needs a background. So, hey, Robbie, how are you? So good to see you. Yeah, hopefully you're taking care of yourself. Everybody's taking care of themselves and hanging out at home, even though we've all gotten to know our houses a lot better and the people we live with a lot better. Now it's like we're all gonna be moving out. <laughs> I'm moving when this is done. Okay, maybe not, probably not. We can't afford to. Okay, so now we have this beautiful house, some beautiful colors, and we're gonna go ahead, add a little bit more pink to there. Now it's hard to see, it looks more red here, but I'm trying to make it pink. Let me go ahead and see if I can grab some white on that tip and see what that does. Now the lightest colors will always be on the top of your puzzle pieces. We're just bouncing it up and down to create just some variation in our piece. And we want always to add some sort of variation. Oh, that looks like magenta right there. And we'll just bounce it up and down, up and down. Every single puzzle piece will have three sides. It will have the light side, the middle, and then the bottom. If we just do those three simple things, we will trick the eye into seeing some sort of a 3D shape. Okay, so now we have created a nice simple tree with bounces, just bounces. We first mapped it in with a little bit of magenta color. You could totally use red too. Um, and then we bounce some white right on top of it. And um, hey, Tony, Larry, 
Kendra, good to see you all the way from Florida. Good to see you. Okay, so then we'll add a little bit of white on the top and the dark will be on the bottom. When you create light on the top, dark on the bottom, it tricks the eye into seeing 3D. Let's go ahead and, hey, Brent, good to see you. Hopefully you guys are all painting at home or at least grabbing, um, you can even do this on paper. I'm gonna start again with the light on the top on this yellow and the yellow is still going to go ahead and touch that yellow underneath it's slightly mostly dry but you can see that we also now just created a light side and then we'll create a dark side look at the lighter on the top we'll go ahead and hit this side where we have the white on there beautiful beautiful very nice very nice so now let's go ahead and add that yellow needs a little bit of darkness on the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a darker yellow I'm dropping off water sometimes now. I got a little bit of sienna in there, but I also know that I've exaggerated it. And when you exaggerate it and put a little bit of the medium and the dark, it so that exaggeration is the darker is on the bottom, the lighter on the top. It actually, hey Dan, how's it going? Good to see you. Hopefully you're out there still taking pictures for everybody. We like to see your pictures. We like everything you do. Okay, so. There we go, now we have a light side and a dark side. We're gonna create a tree somewhere in there. We haven't added any tree trunks yet because we don't want to just yet, but we will. And let's go over here and see if we can get some dark side on this one. So we have the lightest on the top, the darkest on the bottom. Look what happens, let's just show you. We're taking that same yellow color. We're gonna break up this ground with a little bit and just add a little bit of that yellow here and there, nothing big. Just a little bit here and there. Maybe we'll add a little bit of that yellow to the house just to break up that white again. Nothing big. Look at what happens when we go ahead and take that nice mapped out um, doorway and all doorways have sort of like a trim. So we have to add some sort of a detail so that the eye notices the trim. We'll go on both sides. The edge of your canvas is always straight up and down. So if you're unsure, look at the edge, look at the trim, look at the edge or in the side of the house because there are a few things that you do need to adhere to in order to trick the eye into seeing something real. The bottom of the door should be going straight up and down unless you want it to look like it's not quite, like it's tilting like a barn or something. You wouldn't have to worry about it. I'm gonna extend it out just a little bit. Maybe put a like a top trim on the house for coolness. Let's add a little doorway, maybe a little window. Oh yes, hey, how's it going, peoples? Okay, so then we have the bottom of the house. It goes down the stairs. Now under this light spot, I'm just gonna take the same blue-black color and just go under the stairs. I'm also gonna take that same blue-black color and add a few hints of it here and there on that trail. The dirt color will be a variety of this and that all the way over. Now let's go up to this one. This tree up here, let's add a little bit of darkness to it. Say maybe it's got a shadow on it. So we want to get a little bit deeper, darker. Add the richness, come right to that roof. It is stacked behind that roof. Overlapping is one of the keys of perspective, probably the most overlooked. And when you overlap things, if you look out any window right now, wherever you are, you will notice that something is overlapping, something else, the house is overlapping the tree. When you do that, you trick the eye. The eye sees so 3D when you do that. Okay, and I'm gonna add some orange. I don't know if you can see the tip of there. I'll get some more bright orange. The tip of there, add some orange. Let's just add some orange up there. I mean, what if this tree was like, oh, bro, I'm so cool looking right now. Check me out. Yes, you look great, tree. You're awesome, awesome. Okay, now he's looking good. He's like all super happy. Okay, maybe a few leaves drop down in this area. So we'll add some splashes of color here and there. We don't know, they could be spilling out all over the place. Okay, now we have an absolutely gorgeous scene so far. We have not added any details. Details are one of the keys of perspective. It really helps things pop and come alive. One of the things of details is that uh, greenery will add a lot of detail. It will help 
bounce colors off of another. Green has that potential. But in order to keep the green from taking over, I'm gonna go ahead and load my brush with a little tiny bit of that yellow, and then I'm gonna to touch the green. So I have the yellow in there and I just a hint of green. You see that one dot of green? Because green will be like the bombshell and take over everything. It's kind of like in your banking account when the green starts to take over, you get super happy, but you gotta still maintain. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and I'm gonna put in some greenery well, we'll just start right over in here next to the house. We know that there's going to be greenery next to the house because this guy, he grows stuff. He's a grower. People in Sandpoint are such good growers. I noticed that. If you walk them down the alleyways, everybody's growing something because it just grows. Okay, wonderful. Now we have two different colors of green by adding that yellow into the green. It automatically assures that you get a two-tone color because no color, if, once again, if you glance out any window, you will notice that even if you had a yellow field, it would have a variety of yellow. It would have lights, mediums, darks, and maybe a few splashes like we did on this sidewalk here or the pathway, splashes of other colors that are bouncing off of it. Let's go up over in here and add some more of that greenery. Say this greenery is just bouncing over the house, going, dude, I'm so growing and we'll add some greenery up in here. Now let's break up these two by adding some greenery in between them because what if there was this bush going, man, I am not stopping here. I am going all the way up on the show. What happens if we go ahead and add a whole nother greenery bush up in this area? We still like our clouds, but we also know that because of overlapping, those clouds would show through here and there, but let's just add a tree that comes up and bounces down in there. Look at how easy it is to add so much greenery and it adds so much depth with a little bit of details. Now we have a nice background. We have the nice sky and the trees, the different colors. We've totally broken it up. Let's go ahead now and see about adding some sort of a fence in that front. This is mostly dry. Well, okay, it's not totally dry, but it's mostly dry. So we're gonna go ahead and see about adding a fence. I'm first going to load my brush. Oops, I can see there's a little bit of water in there. I literally just set the brush on the towel and it takes most of the water out and you'll see most of the paint stayed in. These are flat brushes which makes them super awesome for everything, especially the fence. So let's go ahead, we have a nice yellow on here. I'm gonna touch the yellow or the white to um, blue so that I get once again, a nice variation in color. And we're gonna break up this big area right here with the fence. So I touched the blue. You can see there's a little dot of blue in there, mostly white. Let's just start right in this area and put a fence. You can kind of see we got a fence going on. Nice fence going on. There you go. That's just the first post. I want to make sure that it's going straight up and down. Hey, Melina. Hey, Tony. Linda. Larry. Xavier. All right. From once again, Australia. Australia, you people are painting people. Okay, so now the only thing that matters is that this fence, which is my first post, goes to the end of the canvas. This space, the fence. Fence posts are usually, unless you've got that oddball neighbor, they're usually evenly spaced. So in order to get an evenly spaced area, super simple technique that you could use, even if you were drawing it on paper, is just to go right to the halfway point. Let's just go right to the halfway point and put another fence. Now look at, we just automatically secured our area, telling us that, oh yeah, we will definitely divide this up evenly because we divided it in half first. Then we're gonna take that half and that half and divide those again in half. And if we want to, we could even divide it one more time. Trust your eye, your eye knows. Your eye knows perspective better than the mind. The mind will try and tell you what it is and the eye will just give it up. Yep, that's it, that's not it. Look at how we created a pretty simple fence. We haven't done added any greenery to it, but we'll probably add some sort of a, uh, hey Billy, good to see you. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we now have this side of the fence. Let's jump on over and do the other side. The only thing that matters, unless you have that oddball neighbor, and we've all known somebody like that. We're not naming any names. Ooh, not saying it, I'm not saying it. 
Linda. But anyway, back to the other side of the fence. This side needs to be the same as this side, so let's just approximately put it about the same side. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you all, thank you all for watching. Okay, so then we have this one. I'm trying not to make it too long, so I'm not doing it too fast. I was already told too fast, too slow. I'm trying to make it so that you can follow along if you want. Now, the only thing that matters is that these two are about the same. Look at my brush shows that they're about the same height. Now I'm gonna go ahead once again and divide this space in half. Then I'm gonna divide it in half again. Look at how it touched that green, no big deal. We all like the green. We'll just pop it on there again, wipe off our brush and space it so that they're all spaced evenly. Now here's a super cool technique that you can go home and tell the dog all about because you know we've all gotten close to our dogs lately they've been hanging out with us i don't know if you saw the youtube video where the dog's telling everybody go home go back to work go back to work get out of my house and i thought i wonder if dogs really do that they probably do okay so we now have that nice fence this nice fence let's add a little bit of a gate now we want to look into the pathway so we're going to leave the gate open so in order to make a gate open, there's a thing called foreshortening. You don't have to remember anything that I tell you that seems complicated because it's not necessary if you let your eyes see it. Since you all have awesome eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the gate so that it will seem like the gate's opening. I'll just maybe put a little, like a little U-turn because it adds some uniqueness to the gate and we'll make it a little bit seem shorter and then we'll draw the lines, go straight up and down, and we'll draw this angled line. See how this angled line, lines are either straight or curved or they go up or down. This one's going up because we're gonna go up into where the house is to visit those people. Okay, so now we have that nice fence coming up. Let's go ahead and put a second line, maybe going like this. Going, well, that's a cool gate. Yeah, that's my neighbor's gate. Okay, so now, you see that background that we started to color in? We wanted to be able to see the fence against that background because you gotta have something to hold the fence in or something to, behind the fence. And because we all have fences, well, maybe not all of us, um, we're gonna go ahead and put some greenery and some stuff behind, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, Mary, Tenny, and Luia, Luia from China. I hope you guys are doing well over there. We're cheering for you. Yeah, you got it, you made it. Okay, so now we're gonna color in that background, putting in colors behind those. I'm adding some greenery to it, a little bit of blue to it because that will help accentuate the fence when we add the colors behind the fence. Okay, so we're adding those colors behind the fence. Adding a little bit of that greenery here and there coming on top of the fence. You see how that just helped define the fence by putting colors behind it. Yes, all right. Now look at what happens. What if we wanted to change the height of the fence? I could actually use that green color and bounce that baby as far down as I wanted to, or I could even put it to where it was coming up and through the fence. See how it comes through the fence? That guy's like, oh dude, I'm so out of this yard. I'm going to the lady next door. She's nice. Okay, so then we put these guys, they're coming through the fence. These guys are the escapees. They're the teenagers of the group. They're like, I'm so not hanging out here. I am over this fence. I am over it. There you go, you're over it, buddy. And put more greenery coming through here and there, here and there. This guy left the fence open, so the greenery is growing through it once again. And he doesn't even care. He's like, oh, you guys just go for it. Just grow, go ahead and grow. Save yourselves. Okay, there we go. Incidentally, I am talking like this to myself all the time. There is another voice going on in my head. I have no idea who it is, but it's fun and funny. And I am a fun and funny person. Life is too short not to be. We'll go over to this side of the fence because we can. 
and the greenery once again is coming through here and there here and there oh yeah it's a growing this guy is growing good stuff you betcha and because we know that the fence the greenery would come up and over a little bit of the path oh yeah there's going to be stuff coming up over that path i added some yellow a little bit of yellow to that green and this is part of the bushes coming up not getting too specific because he didn't mow the lawn like in five years and so the lawn looks like that if we wanted to look like a lawn we would just go back and forth but we want it to look a little overgrown this guy's all happy about the overgrown look. Yes, he's a single guy. He's super stoked. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back up into here and add some greenery up in those trees because the trees have a little bit of a greenery, but in the springtime, it's more of like a limey green. Limey green. And once again, growing up over the house here and there. Now look at that. We have just put in all that greenery behind the fence and there's the house in front of the um, the other trees. Let's add some greenery down below here. This is the same probably an alleyway and you guys probably have beautiful alleyways wherever you're at. I've noticed that some of the best walks are through the alleyway. Once again, load my brush with a little bit of that yellow and a small dot of that green not too much green but mostly yellow let's go down here and put some bushes at the bottom of the fence oh yes bushes once again we just covered up overlapping again the bottom of the fence maybe some of this greenery is growing up over here if you get too much water in your brush touch your towel and it will come off let's put some greenery over here look how much darker that is than that because i forgot to add my yellow go ahead add the yellow green we are so close to calling it superlative okay now in order to ground things there needs to be a shadow i can show you a difference i add a little tiny bit of this purple nah not dark enough blue yeah dark enough okay let's go ahead and go under these bushes bring it up in the bushes and add a little bit of a shadow look at how that causes it I touched the green a little bit too much oh wow come over here add a little bit of a shadow over here cool spectaculars that looks good now we have left the gate open for anybody to walk by and grab flowers because they can okay what are we missing here oh i can see what we're missing because these people are shopping at the store because that's where their friends are we're going to go ahead and make this window a little bit darker a little bit darker because they're not home right now they're going to be home in 12 minutes and we're painting their house, so we have to get it done before they get here. We want to put a little tiny bit of a, see if I can do it with this bigger brush, a little tiny bit of a trim around that window. I added pure white to the brush and go around the window with that white. Around on the other side, because everything has some sort of a trim around it. If you were a construction person, I think I had Larry the other day, a construction person telling me what I need. Okay, now let's add a center piece to that window. The crossbar looks super cool. Check that out. We'll look at what we did. Okay, so now we got to add some shadow around that window. A little tiny bit of a shadow, too much water. Come on! Okay, so we had a little bit of that shadow because the bottom part of that window would have a shadow. It could even drag down. Oopsie, too much. Too much! Okay, so we'll come over here. And I'm too much again, but I'm going to go ahead and lighten it up. I'm going to actually, because that little bit of a blob right there, I'm going to use this white, pure white, and I'm going to use that color. They're going to blend and create a lighter blue. I'm going to put little bits here and there and let it blend out because I actually like mess ups. The more, I read a quote today that the most successful people on the planet actually have had the most failures and it made me feel so good because I have had so many of them and I now am thankful for failure because that is the a key to success and who doesn't wanna be successful? 
Okay, so I'm adding that trim around the house, adding the trim over on this side, adding the trim over on this side, and maybe secure that bottom area where the people step so they have somewhere to step before they go inside the beautiful house. This is the back of the house where people come up and they ride their bike and like, oh, dude, I'm home, and nobody answers. The dog's like, go away. You've been here too long. Go back to work. Okay, nice trim around that little tiny door window. And then we're gonna add, touch that blue and we'll just drag it out a little bit on that door. We want the door to have a little bit of characters. Once again, we talked about how colors, variation of color, there would always be a variation in color. There's a little bit of light, a little bit of dark. Uh-huh, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Look at that blue. Awesome sauce. Look at what you guys just did. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking your hand right now. I'm telling you, you did a good job. You deserve a Coca-Cola or maybe just a, uh, maybe just a glass of wine. Okay, we are pretty much done, but what about those trees? Are they floating in air? No, they're not. They don't float in air. Maybe on another planet or something, but beings that we all live on the same planet, we're going to go ahead and ground them with a little tiny bit of a tree trunk yes now that we have tree trunks we can say dude you can stay you get to stay okay and we'll go ahead and maybe add another tree trunk down in this one and the branches would be a hit and miss here and there dragging off oops i touched the white on that one that white's still wet we'll add a tree trunk right over in here what about on this side these guys need tree trunks too hey i want to get some tree trunk going there we go and maybe a little bit up in here up in there and this one might have a hit and a miss letting the color drag and oh voila look at what you did look at what you did you just created a really pretty simple little piece we first mapped it all out added some beautiful color and i'm gonna go ahead and sign off and say thank you all so much for watching you guys rock and please be safe and love yourselves take good care of yourselves and keep painting because painting is good for the soul all right love you guys thanks again have a great day